Okay, we are uh, we are in the second week of a four-part message series called Small Things, Big Difference. And if you missed last week, you can find last week's message. It's online. Like I said, you can go to our YouTube page or Facebook or our website. There are links all of there, not only for that message, but for all the previous messages. But we talked last week about how sometimes we'll look at somebody's life. We only see the outside, but we look at their life and they they appear like they have it all together. I mean, they have the, the perfect family. They, they have the perfect figure, the perfect career, the perfect bank, whatever they have. They have it going on. And, and we notice that they're good at something that maybe we don't in a way that maybe we don't feel like we could be good at or or even get to that place. And sometimes we look at stuff like that. And we get intimidated and we begin to think, I don't even know what big changes I would have to make in my life to even get anywhere near that. I could never accomplish those, those big things because I'm just so far behind. And we, we zeroed in on a key thought that is so important, not only for last week, but this week and all four weeks, uh, the entire series really, and it's a very important thought. And that is, it's not always the big things. It's not always these huge things, but, but if you're taking note, it's often the small things. It's often small changes in your life that can lead to the big changes that everybody wants in life. In fact, last week we talked about a uh, a, a small thing that we all, I believe we can all do this. And I asked you guys, I actually gave you an assignment. I asked you to prayerfully consider and ask God for one specific word, just one specific word that would focus your energy and your thoughts and direction in this next season of your life. And I'm just curious. I just want to know, and remember you're in church, so tell the truth. But how many of you guys, you, you actually did that. You asked God for a word and a scripture. How many of you guys did that? Raise your hand right now if that's you. Yeah, that's okay. I see, I see those hands. That's great. I'm, I'm glad you guys did. Um, that's fantastic because I believe God will honor our step in that direction. People have been actually several people contacted me this week and they said, I have my word. This is my word. And I'm so uh, glad and everything. And I think that's great. They have their verse too. God is speaking to them. I believe through that. And it brings so much hope in life to have a focus. It brings hope in your life to know that you are heading in a direction. And I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of the spiritual growth that I already see going on here at at Journey. You guys are taking this seriously. And I'm telling you what, God has good things in store for you if you do. If you will take that step, if you will begin that journey. I'm just telling you, God God is going to move in your life. Now, for those of you who don't have your word yet, that's okay. You know, that's all right. Um, I've been praying for you. And I believe that God actually gave me your word. I believe I have God's word for you. Here it is. You ready? Your word is procrastination, right? That's, I'm just kidding. Somebody's writing it down. You know, he got my word. That's great. You know, whatever. But I'll just assume that you weren't here last week or you were really, really busy, whatever it is, but it's not too late to do it. It's not too late to focus your life. And it can begin with just one word. Small things can make a really big difference. And that's what we've been talking about. We're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about our thoughts, how important those are. And then next week, we're going to talk about how our thoughts lead to actions and how those actions will actually help develop some habits in life. And we'll see if we can learn some things that will help us get to where we want to do. And we'll do it one step at a time. But today, I want you all, I think we all need to embrace the fact that our thought life, the things that we think about, they matter so very much because I didn't come up with this, but this is absolutely true. Our thoughts will influence our words. Scripture says that what's in your heart will come out your mouth. Our thoughts will influence our words, which will then influence our actions, which will then develop into habits. And that becomes a lifestyle that becomes ultimately a destiny. And so today I wanna talk about what it is that we think about. I wanna talk about our thoughts, which are so important in determining who we become. In fact, Solomon, the man that God said, God gave Solomon supernatural wisdom. And God said that Solomon is the wisest man who ever lived. This is what he said in Proverbs chapter 23. Solomon said this, he said, as a person thinks in their heart, what happens? So they are, that, that's, that's what they become. As a person, as he or she thinks in their heart, so he or she is, so they will become. I like to say it like this, your life will always move in the direction of your most strongest and consistent thoughts. That's the direction that your life will move in. Don't miss the power of this. As a person thinks in their heart, so they become. The fact is, your life will always move in the direction of your thought life. It's in your mind first. It's what you're thinking first, then it becomes your your lifestyle. And, And that's a provable fact. That's why if you go to any bookstore, you will find literally thousands of books 
about the power of positive thinking. Because whether you're a Christian or not, this is a spiritual law, just like the spiritual law of sowing and reaping. And you don't have to believe in it for it to be real. It is real and positive thinking, positive thoughts can move your life in a positive direction. Or you can think of it like, like this. If you think you won't, you probably won't. If you think you can't, I'm betting you won't ever, right? I mean, don't you think that's probably true that, that if you think you can't, you probably never will? You accept that, you accept that you can't and so you never actually achieve that. If, if you think life is gonna be bad and horrible, guess what? I think it most likely is. I, I think if that's what you're looking for, that's what you're gonna find. If you don't have anything to offer, well then you probably, if you think you don't have anything that's, that's worthy, anything that, that you could offer, to, then you probably won't make a difference. You won't because your life will follow your strongest, most consistent thought. On the other hand, if you think you can, I believe you will. I believe that and we, and we know this. We've seen this, this happen. If you believe that there are opportunities out there for you to seize, I believe that you will go out and you will see those opportunities. If you believe that God is for you and with you and will never leave you, well, then I, I, I believe that you will sense his power moving in your life all throughout the day because our thoughts matter. You could say it like this, as a person thinks in their heart, so they become, right? I didn't, I'm not the only one who says that. This is what God says. Your life will always move in the direction of your strongest and most consistent thoughts. And so that's why to kind of build on a foundation for our message today, I wanna to encourage you guys, and I want each one of you, I want you to think about this as an assignment. I want you to do what I would call is a thought audit. And uh, again, I didn't come up with this, but I think it's pretty cool. What I want you to do is to think about what it is that you think about. Because oftentimes that just, our thought life just kind of, our thought pattern becomes kind of like habit, a habit as well. And, and so what I, what I have, and this is in your notes as well. What I want you to do, if you notice over here uh, on, the, on the left here, I have worry, negative, and worldly, or over here on the right, we have peaceful, positive, and eternal. And then there's a scale, one to 10. And what I want you to do is, is actually think about what it is that you think about and, and be honest with yourself. Because I'm gonna tell you, if you are consumed with worldly thoughts and negative thoughts and temporary thoughts, well, you're probably gonna be moving in a negative or a destructive direction in your life. On the other hand, if you're consumed with peaceful thoughts and positive thoughts and eternal thoughts, well, I believe that, that you'd be moving in a better direction for your life and it's up to you. You are the one who controls your thought life. And let's be honest, uh, if, if you're brave enough to do this, if you're going to actually do this, you're going to choose what direction you want to move in in life. You want to move in the right direction or the wrong direction. Well, most of us would just consciously say, well, I'd rather go in the right direction. I'd rather not waste my time. I would rather not travel down a road that's going to lead me to a place I don't want to be. In, 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 rather than that, I, I want to head in the right direction. I don't want to head to the right destination. So if you're honest enough to do this, and, and this is really just between you and you. So be honest, because most of us, I, I think honestly, most of us would not give ourselves 10 on every scale, would we? I mean, if we're being honest, if we're doing it like in a group or something, we might give ourselves a bunch of nines or something like that. But, you know, uh, we probably wouldn't say that we always have the best of thoughts. In fact, I, I think that there are times in life where our thoughts can become consumed with negative thoughts and bad thoughts. And I believe that snowballs. I believe you start thinking about what a bad day you're gonna have. I believe you're gonna find that bad day. I believe it's gonna get even worse. Like kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like you're looking for that and, and life can snowball like that. We can end up, we can slip into a pattern of thinking negative, destructive thoughts all day long. I know I can, I can and I have. I, I throw a little pity party for myself. It's kind of, kind of pathetic but I can get at that place where I'm having that kind of day. There are so many things that cry out to me, worry about me, you know, just be negative about all of this because it's never gonna work out. Think about what doesn't last, rather just think about what's temporary. Be consumed with thoughts about things that won't matter a year from right now. And I can spend a whole day thinking about stuff that a year from now won't matter a whit because I can get consumed in that mindset. In our culture today, this is, this is pretty pervasive because if you watch, if you continuously watch the news all the time, this will be the case because like it, they say, if it bleeds, it leads. When you're watching the news, you're just seeing bad stuff, negative stuff, destructive stuff, 
you know, all, all day long and, and stuff that you need to be worried about, stuff that's happening globally and, and you're worried about this. You, we're worried about so much stuff. We worry about everything. And I believe that's one of the reasons why God inspired the Apostle Paul to, to write about this stuff. And it's recorded in the book of Romans chapter 12. Paul says this, he says, don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world. Don't be like everybody else, but let God transform you into a new person. How's God gonna do that? By changing the way you think. Transformation, my friends, begins with your thoughts. That's where it starts. It's not these huge big things that you go out and accomplish. It starts in your mind. Don't miss the power of this. Let God transform you into the new person by changing the way you think. And then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and perfect and pleasing. I mean, this is good stuff right here. We find that God also is saying multiple times, your life will move in the direction of your thought life. Your life will go in the same direction that your thought life is heading. So you might say, okay, Robert, well, how is it that I do that exactly? I mean, practically, how do I, how do, how do I change my thoughts? Because it seems to me, I think about 10,000 things and sometimes thoughts I don't even want to think pop into my mind. Like all of a sudden, a bad thought appears in my mind. And where did that come from? So how do I control my thoughts? I'm glad you asked because I'm going to show you just a couple of things, and there are more, but just a couple of things this morning. Two thoughts that can help us change the way we think. First of all, do the thought audit. How, think about the things you think about. And then if you want to change that, you're going to have to work at it because it's not natural and it's not easy. It is easy and natural to worry about everything. Agreed? Yeah, that, that's, just, that's just natural. That just comes really, really easy. What we're trying to do though is change that pattern. How do you change the way you think? Number one, if you're taking notes, is this. We're gonna try to learn to capture these destructive thoughts, to actually notice them, to notice when we're slipping down that hill, when we're going in that wrong or just destructive direction, we're gonna try to capture these destructive thoughts. If we're consumed with worried thoughts and negative thoughts and temporary earthly thoughts, God says it is actually possible for you to capture those thoughts, those destructive thoughts. And so this is the way that Paul taught us to do it in 2 Corinthians in chapter 10. He, he, in a letter, he's writing to the Corinthian church. Unfortunately, they were believing a lot of lies. They, they had some issues. And so Paul is addressing it here. And Paul says, for though we live in the world, though we live in this world, is, is everybody agree with that? We live in this world. Though we live in this world, we do not wage war as the world does. In other words, if you're a Christian, this is really, really good news because the, the, the weapons that we fight with are not just the weapons that you might have acquired over a lifetime. So you're not gonna need a, an, an M16 or an AR-15 or a rocket launcher. You, you're not gonna need those today. If you don't have a big stockpile of weapons, don't worry about it because we, Paul comes on to tell us that we have some supernatural weapons at our uh, disposal. They're available to us. He says, on the contrary, our weapons, the things that we use as, as Christians, they have divine power, supernaturally divine power to demolish strongholds. Now, I don't do this every week because uh, it's, 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 sometimes it can get confusing, but I find it really helpful in some situations. If you, you need to know what the Greek word for power is, it, it's a very specific word. It has a, a big meaning. The, it's the word dunamis. The word power in, in the Bible is the word dunamis in, in Greek. And what it means, it's where we get the word dynamite from. Anybody ever light off dynamite? An M80, a firecracker? Okay, you're nervous around M80s and firecrackers. Imagine the power in a stick of dynamite you'd light that off and throw it in the parking lot. I mean, this is, this is, in English, we get that word dynamite from this particular word. So it says that, that we have this explosive power from God available to us to demolish strongholds. The Greek word for stronghold here is a unique word too. It's actually the word okarama. And it means very literally, it means that somebody is a prisoner trapped by deception. So think of an old castle or a dungeon or something like that. You think of somebody locked away in there. That's kind of what, that is a stronghold. You believe, you're, you're deceived by deception into believing something that holds you prisoner. It's when you're locked up by the wrong or false thoughts. So think about this. What is our spiritual enemy, the, the one who hates you more than anything? What is his main weapon? Jesus is the truth. But Satan is what? A, a liar. In fact, he's called the father of lies. Lies originated with him. So it's like when you're locked up by the wrong or false thoughts that come from, not Jesus, but they, they come from your spiritual enemy. And so what he wants to do, what Satan wants to do is to convince us to believe things that are not true, to base our lives on things 
that are not true, to keep us occupied thinking about things that don't matter, that won't last, that are destructive. And, and what he really wants you to do is build your life upon those lies, to spend your time consumed thinking about these lies rather than the truth. Because when you know the truth, Jesus said, you know the truth and what? Truth will set you free, right? And so Paul goes on to say, he's, he says, we demolish these arguments. We demolish these arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the truth, the, the knowledge of God. We destroy those things. And what do we do with it? Paul says, and we take captive, we take captive those thoughts and we make them obedient to the truth. We make them obedient to Christ. I love this. We demolish the lies and we take captive those thoughts and we make them, we compare them to the truth and the truth wins out. We compare them to the, to be obedient with Christ. So when you think, you begin to think in your life, you begin to think, I, I can't do this. I, I'll never do this. I'm, I'm not good to do that. I can't imagine that I'd ever get, I've messed up so much. You know what? I, I, I'm just a hot mess in my life. I'm never going to amount to anything. No, you, you don't, you don't think that you don't let those thoughts kind of percolate in your mind. Instead, you take those thoughts captive. You recognize them for what they are and you make them obedient to Christ. Now understand, God, God wouldn't tell you to do this, people, if it wasn't possible. It may sound difficult. You're wondering how you're ever going to do this. If it were not possible, it wouldn't be in here. But God says this is possible uh, for us to do. And, and there's something we can, this is something we can learn to do. And you have to learn to do this. You have to, whenever your mind says, you're messed up, God can't use you, you're a loser. No, no, actually, you know, I'm who God says I am. I'm not who you say I am. I'm not who the world says I am. I'm who God says I am. I mean, in my life, if, if you look at my life, I've messed up in my life in, in a really, really big way. But this is good news because God is working in all things. Do you believe that? God is working in all things, right? We know that, that God is there somewhere. And God can work through all things to bring about good. Now, what do all things include? Well, that would include things I like, maybe. But it would also include things that I don't like. It would include things that I do right, but it also would include God can work through the things I even do wrong. It's, it's the things that I understand and agree with, but it's also the things that I don't understand and I don't agree with. God can work at all of those things to bring about in the end something good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose, which means that God can use even my mess ups. God can use my mess ups to change me and help me become more like the image of Christ in some way, in some shape, in some fashion. God can bring a good thing out of a very bad thing. God has the ability to do that. God is going to use this somehow to further conform me more and more into the image of his son. God can take bad things and bring good things out of it. Like you might think, well, I, I, I'm never going to I'm never going to overcome this. In my life, I've dug this hole so deep. I've been addicted for so long. I'm so tired. I've prayed and, you know, it hasn't changed anything. I just can't do it. I can't do it. That's a bunch of trash. Because the truth is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's, that's the truth. That's, that's, that's making it obedient to Christ. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb. That's truth. Right? That, that overcomes that lie. And so we take our thoughts captive, those things that are, that are untrue, we capture them, meaning we notice them, we recognize them, and we make them, we find scripture to back up how that is not true. We make them obedient to Christ. The second thing Paul teaches us is this, that we need to fix our, once we know what are our good thoughts and our bad thoughts, we need to fix our thoughts on spiritual things, on spiritual truths, meaning we focus on the eternal rather than just the temporary. We work to see the big picture. We want to find the spiritual truth about things. Paul, from prison, he writes this letter. You know this letter as Philippians. Paul was in prison. He was waiting to be sentenced and executed. And he's writing this letter. And the letter is so encouraging. In Philippians chapter 4, Paul says this. Finally, brothers and sisters, he said, whatever is, whatever is bad, whatever is horrible, all the bad things that could happen, the things that, that you don't want to have, whatever is not going well in your life, think about these things. Oh, wait a minute. I got that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> he, he didn't say that. He didn't say be consumed with all these things of how horrible your life is. He didn't say anything like that. What he said was, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Think about that stuff. Then in verse 9, if you do this, he says, then... The God of peace will be, God's peace will be upon you. You want to know how to find, how to find peace in your life? 
It starts with your thoughts right here. Whatever's, whatever's good. Fix your thoughts on what is true and noble. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, let those things consume your mind. Let those things take place in your mind. We capture the lies. We recognize them and capture them. And we make them obedient to Christ. And then we begin to focus on the spiritual truths, the eternal truths. And, and I'll tell you, this has impacted my life. It, it, changing the way I think about things literally transformed not only my life, but my destiny. And that's not an overstatement at all. Because as I think, I will become, right? As I think, I will become. And uh, my life is always going to move in the direction of my most consistent and strongest thoughts. And let me tell you a lie. A lie that I believed for, for many years. As a Christian, I, I believe this lie. And I've been, I've been teaching and ministering uh, as a pastor for about 15 years now. But for years before that, when I was a Christian, I actually had been told by other Christian, by Christian leaders that, that if you had a bad past like me, if you had messed up horribly in your life like I did, then you can't be a pastor. You can't get, even get into seminary. You can't be a pastor. They wouldn't want you in seminary. I mean, you're not really fit to serve God in any meaningful way because you're disqualified because of the things that you've done in your life. I mean, you look, you can be saved. They, they, they would always say, yeah, of course you can be saved, you know, and you can serve God in some capacity. But uh, if you have a bad, sinful past, then you're kind of disqualified from ever being a minister. And I thought about it, and I thought, well, we've all done bad stuff. We, if that disqualifies you, we, we've all had bad parts. In our, is there anybody here who hasn't messed up in some way? Like, you know it. You don't like to think about it, but, but it's there. You know you messed up in a major way. It, it, so if that's true, if, if, you know what? Then nobody would ever be qualified to serve. If you have to be perfect to be a minister, we're, we're in trouble. Aren't we? Because that means none of us could do that. And if you just think about it, the, the, the apostles, I mean, no disrespect, right? I love these guys, but they all messed up in, in, in big ways. I mean, Paul, Peter, Thomas, John, all of them, they, they all had their faults, not to mention the biggies in the Old Testament. I mean, we're talking about flawed people being used by God. What about David? What about Noah? Well, Moses. I mean, they had a ton of baggage. These guys had, they had messed, and God used them mightily. And so I was praying and I was seeking God because I, I felt like I wanted, I felt like I was called to ministry and I wanted to serve and do something meaningful. And, but, but here I am being told that I'm disqualified. And it's kind of like this revelation hit me. I was reading scripture and, you know, I, I read the verse that says, we all fall short of perfection. If you have to be perfect to minister, we all fall short of perfection. I, I read about it, you know, there are none Big word there, right? No one, none that are righteous. You see that? No one is good enough. All have sinned. And I thought, well, this, I remember reading that verse that particular day. And this is as close as I've ever gotten to God speaking to me audibly. I've never heard God's verse, a voice audibly. But I'm reading this passage and I'm, I'm thinking about these thoughts. And it's like at that moment, I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but th that's when scripture comes alive. And you're like, oh God, put that in there for me. And I'm re I've read it before, but this day I'm reading and it comes alive. And, and, and I'm, it, it's, at this moment, I don't know if you had this, it's like memories flash, just like a real quick sequence of who I was in a split second, who I was before Christ. And now who I am because of Christ. You know, the, the dark sinful me, the spiteful me, the, the controlling, impatient, um, judgmental me. I, I saw him clear for who he was, but then I look at who I have become. And I remembered what my life was like before Christ. And I recognized the changes in me since Christ. It just hit me. He took my sins at that moment of salvation. But as Larry said, he, he, he also, there, there's more there. He takes my place, but he gave me his place. He made me righteous. He gave me his righteousness. So when God looks at me now, God sees his son. He sees perfection. I am far from perfection. I hate to admit that to you, but I am, if you haven't noticed yet, right? That's part of the deal, though. And if he could do that for me, he could do it for anybody. If God could do that for me, he will do it for anybody. And I've preached the gospel, invited people to come and turn from the, and restore their, their or, or develop a relationship with, with God through Christ ever since then. Now, I'll tell you, at this moment, there's nothing that feels really more natural for me to do than to teach Script, teach the Bible to teach in, in front of a group, but there's nothing that seems more supernatural to me either because I realize it's not me. 
that, that does it all, that, it, that it's the spirit of God. So it's, it's supernatural and natural, but, it, but it's not just what I do. It's who I am. I am becoming who God created me to be. And that's available to each and every one of you. That doesn't mean you have to go out and be a minister. What it means is God wants you to find your true self, your real self. Stop believing the lies and begin believing the truth. And once I renewed my mind from the, believing the lie that I can't do it, which is what I heard about a lot of things in my life. You can't do that. You can't do that. No, I, I just say, you know what? This is what God created me to be. This is who I am. This is who God wants me to be. And, I'll, and he's given me everything I need to do what he has called me to be. Don't miss the power of this. Some of you guys, you are just one thought away. One thought away from changing your entire life. It starts with small things sometimes. Your life could be completely different and transformed a year from now. And you may look back and say, this was the moment when you're reading through scripture. God will bring that scripture alive to you. And if you'll stop believing the lies of your spiritual enemy and embrace the truth of God. Because when you know the truth, it will set you free. Now, it might be painful. Knowing the truth sometimes can be very, very painful. But you fix your mind on the spiritual things that you know are true, the eternal things. Now, some of you are going to think, well, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that, Rob. You're a pastor. I mean, it probably comes easy for you. Your faith is bigger. You probably glow in the dark when you pray. No, I don't. I don't have a special line. To, when I pray, it's just like when, when you pray. I'm just a guy doing the best I can. But I have found this to be true. And you need to understand that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ... You will begin to see God working in your life when you begin to look for it. You can find what you're looking for. You will find the things that you are looking for in life. You'll always find that. Let me give you an example. Just take a look at the difference, not just in the picture, because the, the one on the left there is, is a buzzard. And the one on the right in the bottom is a cute hummingbird. Two different birds, right? Both birds. What does a buzzard do? Well, a buzzard flies around all day looking for what? Dead things. It's looking for dead things. Buzzards love to find dead things. Dead squirrel on the road. Jackpot, you know, it's going to be a good day for a buzzard because that's what he's looking for. He's looking for something dead so he can feast off it. What does a hummingbird look for in life? Flowers, nectar, sweet things, pretty things. Every day, I'm going to tell you, every day there are dead things to be found and every day there are also sweet things to be found. It just depends on what you're looking for. But you will find what you're looking for. If you're looking for spiritual things, you will begin to see spiritual things going on around you all the time. You just never noticed them before. It's kind of like when you're looking for a car. You ever, like you get an idea in your mind, you think, I think I want a, a different car, a newer car. And so you begin to look at the models, different, a certain make, a certain model of this car. It strikes your fancy somehow. And you're looking at pictures at it. You think, I think I might like to get a car like that. And you start driving around and guess what? They're everywhere. You see them and you're like, everybody owns this. this. There's like thousands of these cars. This model, this car is everywhere. Why? They were there all the time. You just didn't notice them. But now you're looking and now you notice them because you notice them, you're looking for them and you see them all over the place. Like, oh my gosh, there are so many of that kind of car. It's everywhere, you know? And then you start to doubt whether you want to get that car because they're everywhere. <laughs> so you look for something else a little bit more exclusive. But you look, let me tell you what, you look for spiritual things. You look for spiritual truth and you will find them everywhere. How do you do that? I'll tell you how you do it. It's really, really, really simple. When you wake up in the morning, first thing you do when you wake up in the morning to start your day, you begin it spiritually rather than the way that a lot of us do. When instead of rolling up over to the side and picking up your phone and seeing how many people like that picture of the dinner you posted last night or how many friends, instead of spending your time looking at that stuff, which we can all probably agree is, is temporary and, and sometimes negative and it's not all that great, right? Rather than doing that, instead open up your Bible. Very first thing in the morning. This is a, a good spiritual discipline practice to begin your day looking at the Bible. You don't have to read a whole chapter. I mean, I think that'd be great if you did. But, but open it up and read a small portion. Let your mind begin the day thinking about spiritual things. It sets a tone. It sets a tenor. And, th and then say a prayer. First thing in the morning or in the evening if you're work third shift, whatever. Start your day praying for just a few minutes. And if you've got to go take care of business, do that first. But then say a prayer. And it doesn't have to be really long. It doesn't have to be a two-hour prayer. It could be, you know, God, thank you for this day. I know today is a gift. And I thank you for that gift, God. It is, it is my gift to give it back to you. And start your day just with that simple prayer. God, use me wherever you want to. Help me, help me be sensitive to your leading today in whatever you want me to do. Whatever you want me to work on, let me find that. God, guide my words. 
Help me guard my words and my thoughts and create my actions to bring glory somehow to you. That's a short little prayer that you could pray. Help me see where you're working, God, and I'll join in. Just, just a short little prayer like you pray that and guess what? You're going to see nectar. You're going to see good things and sweet things and even eternal things because God is working everywhere. And that is how you do it. That is how you renew your mind. That is how you demolish these. Instead of letting your mind drift towards all the things that are crying out for your attention. Instead of going, wow, that, you know, that was lucky. You know, instead of thinking you, it was just a coincidence, you give credit to God. You begin to demolish these strongholds. You're not going to think like that. You're not going to be that person anymore. You give God credit and, and, and God blesses you. And then all of a sudden, you'll see God at work everywhere. You'll become one of the most God-sensitive people around because that's what you expect to find and that's what you're looking for. So when your boss chews you out, instead of yelling back at them, you know, or quitting or whatever, you, you might say, golly. This person is so stressed. God, how can I pray for this person? I don't even know what they're dealing with. Lord, how can I make a difference in their life? And so you, you actually look at it a little bit differently. You change your perspective and suddenly you're going to see someone that is in need. And you're thinking rather than thinking, oh, golly, I hate this person. Now you're thinking, you know, God, how can I help them? How can I help them find some peace? God, are you calling me to make a difference in their life? And, and then God, God, because believe me, God wants to use you. God wants to use each and every one of you and suddenly you have the power. Look, truth or trash people, it's up to you what you're gonna focus on in, in life. Whenever your mind says something is, that is untrue, stop it. Recognize that that is untrue. Take that thought captive and it's just trash. And instead of focusing on that, start to focus on something that is true and not temporary because as a person thinks in their heart, that is who they become. Your life will always move in the direction of your strongest, most consistent thought. You have no direction in your life. That means no real life, right? This is how you do it. This is literally how you do it. And it, and it sounds simple and easy, but it's hard to do, but it is a process that can be learned. God wouldn't tell you you could do it if you could not. Therefore, I take every thought captive and I make it obedient to Christ. And I fix my thoughts on things that are pure and lovely, admirable, noble, and, and eternal. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, I focus on the, I choose to focus on those things. So where do we go from here? How do you take this from something that you just hear me talk about uh, on a Sunday morning into something that actually becomes part of, of who you are? Well, last week I challenged you guys to, to pray and seek God for just one word. And if you haven't done that, I still encourage you to do that. Um, that, that that's something that's important to kind of get you to learn how to focus. Next week, what I want you to, uh, I'm gonna ask you this week, I mean, what I wanna ask you to do is, Prayerfully seek God for a thought, just a thought that you're going to think, and it can be short and it can be simple, but one thought, one God-inspired thought that will help move you in the direction of changing your thinking pattern, something that can result in even a bigger change than you could possibly imagine, because it's often the small things that we do that nobody even sees and notices, that, that one small step that brings all these big changes that we want in life, one thought that will you will think again and again on this thought until your mind is renewed on that one thought till you become convinced of that one thought that one truth in your life and it becomes part of it is lodged in your heart and it changes the words that we speak and that will begin to change the things that we do how we live our lives you want to change the way you live change the way you think i love this verse this is a verse that came to me it's from psalms uh 104 34 and it says may all my thoughts may all my thoughts be pleasing to God, for I rejoice in the Lord. May all my thoughts, it doesn't say may I have a perfect life. May I always get it right. I think may my thoughts be pleasing to the Lord. Your thoughts determine direction. For me, however many years ago, I had the thought that I, I, I wanted to embrace the idea that, that God had called me to be a minister. I knew that was in my heart. I knew that's what, like, I, I remember the day that I realized that. And I wanted to hold on to that. And over and over and over again, I told myself, God, God has God created God has created me. Nothing jazzes me more than to talk about God, to help people connect or reconnect with God and understand him a little bit better in their life. So I began to believe this thought that God had chose me. God had um, ordained me to help people who are far from God move closer towards God. That, that was my calling in life, that God gave me everything I need to do, everything he has called me to do. I already possess those skills, those talents, those abilities, and God made me the person I am so that I could reach people for Christ. And I know he wants me to help you. And that one thought, I, I just kept thinking, even though everybody was telling me, it's not, you know, you can't do it, you're disqualified or whatever. I kind of held on to that thought. 
And this year, I told you last week, God gave me a word. And it's a word I focused on all week. The first week I was thinking about it. I must have thought about it a hundred times this week. And it's already changing the way I do what I do. It's changing my thought process. If I want to be stronger in my faith, then I'm gonna to have to work at that. If I wanna be stronger in my body, I'm gonna work at that. If I wanna be stronger in influence, I have to work at that. And God has spoken some words to you guys already about your one word this year. And I don't know what your thought will be. I don't know what one thought you need to focus on, but you need a positive, eternal thought that you can begin to think on and meditate on and absorb and let it become part of who you are. One thought that could change, listen to me, one thought can change the course of your life. I know this to be true. And maybe your word was selfless and maybe your thought is less of me, more of him, right? See how that works? Like I, I wanna be selfless. So your one thought might be less of me, more of him. Maybe your word is generous and, 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 and your thought would be, I wanna become a more generous person. Even if you're not generous now, even if you don't have the means right now, you wanna become generous. So you say, I, I, I am a generous person. Even if that's not you yet, you begin to say it. I am a generous person because I truly believe that it's better to give than to receive. I, that's an eternal thing, and I believe that. And so I, I'm gonna do that. And you begin to think that again and again and again and again, and guess what? You become that person. As a person thinks in their heart, so they become. You may be discouraged, and you, so you think, uh, instead of thinking of all the things that, that you're discouraged about, you think, I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can think on that, meditate on that thought over and over and over again. It's not by might, not by power, but by his Holy Spirit, I can be a different person. That becomes your thought. You know, you got a bad marriage and, and you're, you know, it's difficult to love your husband or your wife and you say, well, I'll love them, you know, with the love of Christ. And that becomes your prevailing thought. I'm gonna love them like, you know, I'm gonna love my, I'm gonna love my wife the way that Christ loved the church and gave himself. I'm gonna do that. That's who I'm gonna become. And it starts to change. Listen, sounds kind of silly because at first you know it's totally not true, right? But it's what you're aspiring to and it begins to change the way you think and the way that you, you act and the way that you live. And it starts to change who you are. Because if you wanna change your life, it starts with thoughts. It starts in, in your mind. It starts what you're thinking on. What are you constantly thinking? Your thoughts create words. Your words create actions. Actions go on to create habits and a habit becomes a, a lifestyle and it becomes a destiny. And as a person thinks in their heart, so they become. Your life will always move in the direction of your strongest, most consistent thoughts. Don't waste that. Now that you know it, don't let that happen to you. Therefore, we don't copy the cost, customs or behaviors of the world, but we will let God transform us by what? By the way we think. You have to reset the way you think, and then we will know God's will for our life, his good, perfect, and pleasing will. We take every thought captive, we make it obedient to Christ. We allow God to do what he says he will do, whatever is admirable, whatever is good, whatever is noble. That is what we will think on all throughout our day. Rather than thinking on what's horrible and what's catastrophic and how bad this is going to be, rather than letting those thoughts consume us, we think on those things. And then the peace of God, that goes beyond all human understanding will be with us. I'm gonna have the worship team come up here. We're gonna 